Hello, and welcome to this episode of Dig Deeper. My name is Anna Shackelford. I'm the site supervisor here at Jamestown Rediscovery. And today we're going to be talking about our North Tower excavation site. The last time y'all were with us when we were talking about it, we were excavating a brick debris layer, potentially from the 1680s, as well as uncovering a very exciting pit feature, likely from the early James Fort period. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've done in the past few months and what we've been finding. As you may know, north of the Memorial Church Tower, we opened one test unit in August 2021 and a second in November. During the 2022 field school, we opened two more test units in between the earlier sites. Let's take a look at the westernmost test unit. So here we have an example of the strata that we've been digging through to get to the end of our excavations. Right up top, you can see we have lots of modern layers. So first of all, we have landscaping fill uh, and gravel from the past 20 or so years. Not a whole lot of artifacts coming out of there. Next, in between our brick and that gravel, we have more modern landscaping fill. Uh, this stuff is a little bit older, circa 1900, from once this becomes a tourist site. We were finding some artifacts within this fill. Most uh, interestingly, I believe, we have a lightning rod cable holder. Uh, and we actually have existing examples still on the island, still attached to trees. Next up, we have some of our historic layers, starting out with this brick layer right here, which we believe dates to right around 1800. Originally, we thought this layer could be from the construction of the church or the brick tower, but as we continued excavations, we continued to find artifacts that told a different story. For instance, we were finding all sorts of mullion bricks, uh, which are decorative bricks from around the windows on the brick church, uh, as well as burnt nails, as well as burned window leads. We were also finding some uh, factory-made slipware that dated from about the 1790s into the 1840s. Taking all of these artifacts into consideration, we believe this brick layer is left over from uh, recycling bricks from the old church, which has fallen down, uh, dilapidated, as the Ambler family is building their cem uh, cemetery wall around 1800. Last up, we have underneath of the brick an open ground surface that served as the churchyard for 100 odd years. And again, we were finding a lot of very interesting artifacts, these ones dating to the early 17th century. For instance, we had bone dice, a Bartman jug medallion, a Catholic pendant depicting St. Veronica, armor fragments, and lots of faunal remains. I am currently in the easternmost of our field school uh, test units where we also had to dig through that brick layer from 1800. And beneath it, we're running into a lot of the same features we were finding in our earlier test unit, including our 1607 planting furrows, which you can see in front of me here, as well as behind me. We know they date to 1607 because they are running parallel with our 1607 Eastern Palisade. So these are the, some of the English's earliest attempts at farming here on the island. We are also finding a couple of post holes throughout these test units. Uh, these are more historic. We believe that they may be part of some sort of boundary or fence line. Each of them measure 8.3 feet apart. Unfortunately, some of them have been cut by more modern uh, features, such as planting holes from the 1950s, as well as a utility line, which has active wires for the Memorial Church. Now, the reason we opened up these two units during field school was because we wanted to further explore our brick deposit. Uh, we were finding this huge brick deposit, which we thought was just one, reaching from our earlier test units all the way over to our later test unit. Uh, but after we excavated our field school test units, we realized there are actually two separate brick deposits. Um, you can see behind me in the wall where the one in our field school units peters out, and then it picks back up again behind me and goes back towards the church that's where the split in uh, this brick debris is. Over to my left in the field school units, uh, that is actually where we have material from right around 1800, when the Ambler family is reusing parts of the church that have fallen down in their cemetery wall. 
That's where we're finding all sorts of material from the original church, including uh, the different types of mortar, uh, plaster from the 1617 church, uh, accidental cleanup from Bacon's Rebellion as they're shoveling material over here to reuse. However, we're not seeing all of that over here to my right in the intact material from the 1680s. It's telling a much different story. Check out our next video where we talk about our uh, pit feature that we're finding underneath of this 1680s brick deposit.